For decades, if you were looking for an affordable sport compact equipped with a manual transmission, it was pretty hard to beat the Honda Civic Si. However, just a couple years ago, Hyundai offered an enticing proposition with their new Elantra Sport. It took the regular Elantra, upgraded the suspension, added more horsepower under the hood, and of course, offered a manual transmission. Now, last year, Hyundai completely redesigned the Elantra, moving it to its seventh generation, giving it this really interesting styling, a completely new interior, and a full fat N version, which I'll be driving later this year. However, for those of you who want that in between, what I'm driving today is the 2022 Hyundai Elantra N-Line. It replaces the Sport in the Elantra family. And just like the Elantra Sport, we have a 201 horsepower turbo under the hood, a standard six-speed manual transmission, and an upgraded suspension versus the standard Elantra. So if you guys are looking for an affordable Sport Compact to use as your daily driver, how does the 2022 Elantra N-Line stack up? Stay tuned to find out. Now, because this is the Elantra N-Line, I want to first start with underneath the hood of this version because unlike the regular Elantra, we have significantly more power under the hood courtesy of a 1.6 liter turbocharged four-cylinder. Now, you guys should be quite familiar with this engine in the Hyundai family. They've been building this engine for quite some time. It's still the GDI direct injection 1.6 liter turbo four, still makes 201 horsepower and 195 pound-feet of torque. You can still take your pick between a standard six-speed manual transmission, which my tester nicely has, or for $1,100, you can also get Hyundai's seven-speed dual-clutch transmission. This is not the newer eight-speed wet dual-clutch that you'll find in the Sonata N-Line, but for those of you who must have an automatic, the dual clutch is a fine option. Now, of course, all Elantra N lines continue to be front wheel drive. And unlike the Civic Si, which is probably the biggest fault of this car, it still does not come with a limited slip differential. Um, so it will have a little bit of trouble putting the power down. We'll talk about that later on in the driving scene. But still, it's a fun car because with over 200 horsepower, you should be getting to 60 and around the seven second mark. And with that six speed manual, it's super engaging. And for those of you who care more about fuel economy, this is also isn't that uh, bad in terms of fuel economy. It's rated at 25 in the city and 34 on the highway. The dual clutch gets slightly better. In my weeks for the testing, I have been beating those EPA numbers significantly, so it's much better uh, fuel economy in the real world. And in terms of the curb weight, this vehicle weighs in at around 2,900 pounds. The dual clutch will add roughly 100 more pounds to the curb weight. So let's take a look at the styling of the latest Elantra N-Line. As you can see, my tester here in this gorgeous shade of intense blue definitely sets the tone here. It's a really good looking car, especially with the black accents. Uh, the current generation Elantra definitely got a lot of praise for its different styling, but it also is slightly controversial, of course. Let's start with the front fascia. You have Hyundai's corporate uh, cascade grille here, although it's now called the geometric grille because you have these interesting geometric shapes, along with a turn signal here, which is an incandescent that kind of integrates itself into the grille openings where you couldn't even see it unless you're really looking for it. Sadly, it is an incandescent. You do have an LED daytime running light. And what really frustrates me about the current end line is you just get projector halogen and headlights. The previous Sport, I believe, offered the LED headlights on the refreshed model. Uh, I wish Hyundai would offer that as a package. The full fat Elantra N will come standard with full LED headlights. You can see down here, just some more openings there to cool the engine. Same thing with here. Some, a lot of the openings here are genuine. Uh, but overall, the halogen headlights for me really cheapen the overall look because this car has a super aggressive look that I think turns a lot of heads. It looks a lot better than the outgoing Civic Si, which Honda discontinued a couple of years ago. Now, looking at the rest of the profile, Hyundai made this new seventh generation Elantra much larger uh, when they redesigned it. It's 184 inches long, about four inches longer than the previous generation. You can see, you can distinguish the N-Line model from the badge in the front and these fender badges here, which say N-Line. The wheels, these are also the standard 18 inch wheels that you get uh, wrapped in two uh, 25 width tires. These are Goodyear Eagle F1 uh, summer tires. This comes standard with the manual transmission. You also get upgraded brakes to handle the extra power, of course, because you need better stopping performance. And the wheels have an interesting look to them. I'm not particularly a fan of the uh, geometric pattern in the wheels, but I do like it in the side profile. I think the car looks really interesting and really aggressive. Now looking over here at the side mirrors, you can see they are black painted, which looks good. The sunroof does come standard on this model, which is also nice. And you can see a lot of the patterns kind of carry over and give this car a really interesting look from the rest of the profile here. Now, looking at the rear, you can see the N-Line does come with this nice little integrated spoiler, uh, which also makes it look more aggressive. And then you also have 
uh, just a sport uh, twin outlet exhaust pipe there uh, back there. I kind of wish they did a full exhaust, like a dual exhaust system. And you can see rear diffuser, which also looks good. The tail lights are kind of the LED combination with incandescent turn signals. And then over here, in terms of the trunk, you can see the trunk size is measures 14 cubic feet. It's practically the same as the regular Elantra. You do have 60-40 split fold down rear seats. Uh, and then underneath the floor here, there is a temporary spare tire. So at least you don't have to deal with a fix a flat kit. So let's get inside and take a look at the interior of the Elantra N-Line. You can see all of them come standard with Hyundai's Smart Access key with push button start. Uh, there is no remote start, obviously, because this car is the manual transmission version. But as I open the door here and look at the interior, I hope you guys like a black interior because this is the only interior color combination that Hyundai offers on the N-Line. I do wish they offered several different other, other color combinations. You, you can see there is red stitching on the door panels. This material here is a hard touch plastic material, which does cheapen the overall look. Uh, but overall, it's a very interesting design. I think the red stitching helps it pop a little bit more. The seats, you can see they do come standard with a 10-way power adjustment, which is nice. No memory seats, but there is the N logo that's embossed into the actual seat back, <clears throat> which makes it look a lot nicer, along with the steering wheel, which has a thicker rim with the red stitching, but no flat bottom wheel. Now getting inside, you can see the step in height obviously is low. This is a sporty sedan. And then when I shut the door, the door has a nice solid sounding thunk. So that gives you an impression of quality. Now, unlike the other uh, Elantras that you can get the N, or the limited version or the N, the full on N, the N line only comes with the smaller screen here. So uh, because I have the manual transmission model, you gotta put the clutch in, the button to fire up the engine is back here where you'd expect it to be. Although it is kind of blocked by the controls of the steering wheel. And you can see the gauges are also very traditional looking because you have a traditional analog tack and speedometer with a smaller helper, helper screen that's LCD uh, to the right side. The gauges also do look good, although for a performance version, I would have I liked the tack to be in the center, front and center, as opposed to the speedo. The engine used to definitely sound better on the Elantra Sport. It's almost like Hyundai made the engine a little bit less throaty for the N line because they wanted you to go for the actual full N. So that's something to keep in mind if you guys remember the Elantra Sport. The instrument panel, you can see this is the smaller eight inch touchscreen, which includes wireless, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Surprisingly, if you upgrade to the bigger screen, it actually downgrades you to a wired connection for the Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. But as you can see, the screen has bright graphics. It's pretty easy to use. It is a little bit small. I don't like all this bla black real estate around it. The kind of cheapens the overall look, uh, but at least the buttons are large. They're well labeled. You have um, volume controls here, volume knob, tuning knob, which is great. Uh, dual zone climate control, which is also nice. You have three level heated seats. Cooled seats are not available. You could look at the uh, sister vehicle to this car, the Kia Forte GT to get those features. Uh, wireless phone charging pad, although is included USB port over there, which is great. The six speed manual also has lovely throws, although not quite as sharp and direct and uh, short throw as the last Civic Si that I drove. You pull up here to go to reverse. And when you do that, you can see there's the backup camera. It's got distance and trajectory. Uh, and I believe parking sensors. It's a pretty nice camera. The resolution and graphics are just fine. And I think that the um, screen placement is also good. It's within easy reach. Now over here, you can see the manual gives you a traditional pull style handbrake, which is great. Cup holders over here, padded armrest over here. And then if you open this up, you can see the center console is a decent size. You have two USB connections over there. They do use the older USB-A outlet. The seats you can see are a little bit more aggressively bolstered. I like the two-tone here with the cloth and the leatherette uh, and the M logo over there. This is just a manual seat. When you open up the glove compartment here, you can see it kind of cheaply falls, sadly, uh, but it is a bin style. It has a relatively good amount of space and the materials on the door, on the dashboard here, this is actually a soft touch material, although it feels and looks a little bit cheap. This right here is also soft touch and the dash has an interesting design when you don't have the full display because this right here, some of you may think it's an air vent. Some of you may think it lights up. It doesn't do any of those. It's just a design philosophy there. Even when you have the full digital displays, you still get that there. It's interesting. The steering wheel you can see uh, has a nice thick rim. I like the red stitching. I wish it was a flat bottom design. The steering wheel itself tilts and telescopes. Offers a good amount of adjustability on the horn. Sounds pretty much what you expect for a car of this caliber. The stereo system in this vehicle also, you cannot get the full Harman Kardon stereo, I believe, in the N-Line models. So it's just the Hyundai, I believe it's a six-speaker stereo. It sounds okay. If audiophiles are definitely going to want to upgrade 
uh, to something else. Sadly, Hyundai doesn't offer their high-end stereo in this vehicle. But overall, um, the interior definitely is decent. It does come with a sunroof, uh, just incandescent lighting here, not all LED. Offers plenty of room, good visibility. And remember, this car is pretty affordable at a starting price of under $25,000. Now, when Hyundai increased the overall length and wheelbase, they were able to give us more space in the back seat, which should be a great selling feature, especially if you're planning to use this as your only vehicle. Now, getting inside, you can see the roof line does slope a little bit, but at five foot seven, I do have to duck my head to get back here. But once I am back here, there is actually a surprising amount of space. Now, as you can see, as I settle in here and shut the door, the door has the same solid thunk as the front. You can see Hyundai says you get about 38 inches of legroom. This is where I'd have the seat to drive. There is a good amount of space back here. This feels a lot more roomy than the last Toyota Corolla uh, that I drove for sure. And the Mazda 3. No rear seat air vents here. Sad to see that they didn't include that. No USB charging ports. No heated rear seats. A lot of the materials back here feel a little bit chitsy. Uh, just like the front so hyundai definitely they cut corners a little bit in terms of the material quality the seat fabric you can see is definitely more of a cloth you get more of that uh leatherette material in the front seats but you still get some of the contrasting stitching only again on the outer bolsters fold this down here you can see there is an armrest here that gives you two cup holders and then the lighting back here is not led sadly and the sunroof takes up a little bit of your space but overall the back seat is definitely one of the largest in the segment now, in the Elantra's 30 plus year history, sporty driving dynamics hasn't really been a part of the equation, at least not until Hyundai introduced the Elantra Sport back in 2018. And that's exactly what the N line model is it's a, it's a continuation of the Elantra Sport, just renamed, of course, with Hyundai's new N and N line naming uh, structure or hierarchy. Uh, and this vehicle, definitely benefits greatly from the new chassis, the new styling of the Elantra that was introduced in uh, last year. Uh, and the N-Line model is designed to go, or at least designed to go head to head with competitors like the Civic Si, um, the Volkswagen GLI. Uh, this vehicle slots between the regular Elantra, of course, and the full-on Elantra N, which I got to drive in prototype form. I'll actually be driving the full Elantra N uh, later this, or next month in November. But for those of you who must have an Elantra now and you want the sportiest one, how does the N-Line compare? Because remember, this one here has the six-speed manual. It's got um, 201 horsepower. And let's just try a quick launch in this car. I'm not gonna do a zero to 60 test just yet. Well, actually, let's go ahead and try it. <laughs> that was bad launch. <laughs> Now, sadly, the gearing in this transmission makes it so I cannot uh, get to 60 miles an hour in second gear. It requires a time-consuming shift into third. Uh, 8.3 was bad, but I'm still kind of trying to figure out the best way to launch this car. The last time I drove this thing, it was almost a year ago <clears throat> at Hyundai's press launch. And the N-Line model, or any manual transmission model, it's always difficult to get zero to 60 times with numbers and such because you have to get the launch right. It's just a matter of shifting gears and whatnot. So definitely want to try that again. <laughs> Remember this car lacks a limited slip diff. <laughs> All right, I got 7.15 seconds there. So way quicker than the first run of 8.3. Um, I would estimate this car is in the High, eight, high six second range if you can get the launch right. The problem is trying to launch this car. It's a little bit of a challenge because it doesn't have a limited slip diff. You can feel the front tire scrambling for traction. Uh, you feel a little bit of wheel hop as well. I mean, 201 horsepower is plenty of power. Uh, and this car feels quick. I love the shifter in it as well. It's got a great transmission. Uh, the shifter throws could be a little shorter. It's not the best that I've tried. I think that the Civic Si, at least the discontinued one had a better shifter still. Uh, the clutch in this vehicle is light, but it's a little vague. Uh, if you're not used to where it engages, you definitely can easily stall this car at times. But there's no denying that this thing is fast. It's got plenty of power, way better than the base engine and the Elantra hybrid. So if you guys are looking at this car, this is the model you're gonna to wanna to get for kind of like that sweet spot. Oh, 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 it's lighting up the inside tire. 
Super fun car. Very fun car. Gobs of torque. The engine also sounds okay. This doesn't have the active rev matching you're gonna find in the Elantra N or the Veloster N. But it's amazing to me because this 1.6 is certainly not a new engine, but Hyundai has done a good job of updating it over the years. It does have direct injection. It does feel like there is a noticeable turbo lag below 3000. Once you keep the revs up and you feel that turbo on boil, it's got gobs of torque. Oh, and sounds good. It pulls hard. The red line is around 6,500 RPM. I do wish it revved higher because the engine feels like it wants to keep pulling. And then when you're just driving it normally, it settles down into a quiet four cylinder hum and it can get surprisingly decent gas mileage. In my week's worth of testing, I averaged 32 MPG in mixed driving. On the highway, I easily beat the EPA's figures and got 39 miles to the gallon. That is very impressive in a vehicle like this. So Hyundai should be pretty pleased. Uh, the only problem is, is you've got a relatively small 12 gallon gas tank and you're looking at around 400 miles of range on the highway. Would like to see it a little bit higher, but still it's nothing to sneeze at. It's a good amount of, or it's good fuel efficiency. And in terms of the driving dynamics and feel, the suspension, this has the upgraded multi-link suspension, stiffer springs and dampers, of course. It, it handles well. Elantra is now, should be at the top of your list if you're looking for a sporty or driving dynamic. The steering also is sharp, direct, decent feedback, very comparable to the last Volkswagen GLI that I drove, although the VW does have more power. This basically feels like a Civic Si minus the limited slip diff. I mean, I, I really would love to see Hyundai upgrade this to give you the limited slip diff. Um, and surprisingly, with the manual transmission, you still get features like automatic emergency braking and lane keep assist, although you cannot get adaptive cruise control on this car. Uh, neither can you get it on the automatic transmission or the dual clutch model. Just wanna see where I can launch this car where it actually gives me a decent launch. It's still cutting the power pretty bad there. <laughs> so it looks like to get the most aggressive launch, I have to be aggressive with the throttle. So I'll try it one more time, see if I can break into the six second range. But remember, the fact that it doesn't have a limit, limited slip diff, you are fighting the front tires for grip, even though my tester with the manual does come with the summer Goodyear Eagle F1 uh, tires which are far more grippy than the base tires that you get. But overall, I'm pretty impressed with the feel. This is a really great driving vehicle for the price. I mean, you can't beat it for this amount of money. And you also get decent tech features, although it still pisses me off that Hyundai does not put LED headlights on this car. Like, come on, Hyundai. It looks so cheap with the halogen headlights on that I just want to upgrade to, or upgrade the headlights myself. All right, try it one more time here. Oh, that hurts. Oh. Yeah, I think 7.1 is probably the best I'm gonna get. It struggles to put the traction, the power down. And if Hyundai really did wanted to get serious with the N-Line model, they would add that limited slip diff. But overall, great driving car, loads of fun, great fuel economy when you wanted to. And relatively comfortable when you just want to drive it as a commuter car. The ride is not, doesn't beat you up. The noise in here is a little louder with the uh, summer tires and you do hear the exhaust a little bit, but overall, very impressive car for very little money. So after spending a full week with the 2022 Elantra N-Line, for $25,000, you can't really find a better sports compact sedan that offers all the tech features and the performance this car gives you. As you guys saw, the turbocharged engine offers plenty of power. I mean, zero to 60 times aren't the point of this vehicle, but the manual transmission is really smooth. It's easy to drive. It handles well, it rides well. It's relatively quiet on the inside, and it has most of the tech features that people want. Now, obviously, no car is perfect, and I did have a couple of quibbles with this vehicle. I would like to see Hyundai add a limited slip differential. I'd like to see them add LED headlights and I'd like to see them offer a premium sound system on this vehicle because I think those are features that a lot of buyers are going to want. Obviously, you can get all of that on the full fat Elantra N, which I'll be driving later this year. That car is also going to offer about 75 more horsepower than this vehicle. And that could be the sweet spot. Although for those of you who want something that's right in between, that's where the Elantra N 
end line fits perfectly because this is way more fun to drive than the base Elantra and of course the Elantra Hybrid. And for those of you, again, who are on a budget at a starting price of around 25 grand for the manual transmission at $1,100 for the automatic, it's really hard to beat the combination that Hyundai offers here. I mean, of course, you could look at the Volkswagen GLI, you could wait for the upcoming Civic SI, or you could also look at the Kia Forte GT, which does offer the features that this car is missing, minus the limited slip diff, but it also ends up costing a little bit more. But with all that said, I hope you guys have enjoyed my full overview on the 2022 Hyundai Elantra N-Line. If you're also looking to see the latest cars I'm testing, be sure to follow me on Instagram at redline underscore reviews. Like us on Facebook. And as always, guys, please keep subscribing to the Redline Reviews YouTube channel for all the latest reviews. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you all in the next video.